Hi everyone, it's Chris from Red Bloom and I am here today for our first Fun Fact Friday. These will be videos that we will post online on Fridays, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube channel. So you can check in on Fridays and learn about yoga. It's about all things yoga, all things Red Bloom. And today our first Fun Fact Friday is going to be about props. We have all sorts of props at Red Loom and we use our props in every single class. Sometimes people come in with the uh, thoughts that if you use props and you're doing it wrong or you're not good enough. Well, that's not what we believe here. We believe that props take you deeper into your practice and that everyone should have props. I always say, you know, it's a good class when you have all of the props scattered around your mat by the time we're done. Um, so today I'll just walk you through the props that we have that you can find at Red Bloom and then I'll talk about my favorite prop, which will be a surprise, so I'll tell you in a minute. Most of the time when you practice with us, my standard answer when people say, what props do we need? A blanket and two blocks. Now we have different levels of different sizes of blocks at Red Bloom, so we have large uh, thick blocks and we have skinny blocks. They're both the same length. Uh, we also have wooden blocks. One of our teachers made wooden blocks for us once. These are fabulous if you're doing balancing or pressing, things like that. They're sturdy, they're solid. We have taller ones as well. We have things like tennis balls. If you ever need to roll out a muscle or something, just feel free to grab them. And we have bolsters. We have two lovely sizes of bolsters. We have our black bolsters, which are rectangular. And then we have our purple bolsters, which are more round. This one's kind of squished, but this is nice and big. And so sometimes when we are in, say, our detox classes or restorative postures, we use both bolsters, and that's really a nice class. You can find all of our props clearly up front at the front of the room. Come on in, grab what you need, make yourself at home. We also have some different uh, props move straps. They're in a basket right here by the rest of them. And then we have big bean bags. And one of our yogis made these. They're fabulous. They're weighted. They're heavy. They're nice. Sometimes put them on your hip as a hip opener. I love to put them on feet when red legs up the wall. We also have littler sizes that are lighter as well. And then these are not my favorite, but my second favorite, little eye pillows. I don't know if you can see them. They're beautifully light, soft, but a little bit of weight. And they're in a basket actually on our fireplace. I do just ask that you grab a Kleenex to put underneath your eye pillow so we don't share eye gunk. I'm a germaphobe, so that makes those a little bit nicer. They're hard to wash. So those are the props that we have. Um, we use almost all of them in every single practice. It, don't be surprised when a teacher hands you a block. Don't be surprised when a teacher says, put a blanket under your hips or put a blanket under your knee. Props are merely there to make your practice more accessible and to have you be more comfortable in poses. When we are more comfortable, we go deeper because we're not fighting ourselves. We're not holding on. We're not um, creating anxiety and tension. When we're fully supported and we're, we're comfortable in a place of stretch, then we stretch more. Uh, my favorite uh, block, my favorite prop is the wall. We all have them, no matter where we are, even if we're at work. Um, the wall is often forgotten as a prop, and I love doing things on the wall. The wall is just amazing. Um, it's supportive, it's big, it's expansive, it's stable, it's sturdy, um, and it's always there. So even if you're at home and you have a small house, you still have a wall, even a door, if you find a door, because those are gonna always be clear of space. Um, and uh, often what we need our walls for, we don't need a lot of space for. Um, so I'm going to show you downward dog on the wall, just to give you an example of how I use walls in our practices. It's lovely because sometimes we don't want to put weight on our hands. Sometimes we have shoulder tightness or um, issues that we don't want to press and bear down on. So we simply come to the wall and walk ourselves back. 
And I want to make sure my feet are underneath my hips. Sometimes we're kind of here, right? Oh, let me see that so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes we're kind of here. That doesn't really do much for our stretches. So we want to walk our feet forward, making sure our hips are stacked and almost leaning past my legs because that way I get a nice deep stretch through my hamstrings and my lower back. Knees can be as bent as we want. And I'm just going to press away. You can see how my head and shoulders are still kind of lifted, but I'm going to melt into it. And I'm using that wall for support. And I'm in a beautiful back body stretch right here. Well, this is a wonderful thing to do if you have lower back tension, tight shoulders. Say you work at a desk all day long or are on your phone a lot. This is a great way just to take a minute, take five or ten breaths, just stretch it out right there. It feels delicious. And like I said, we all have walls. We all have doors. You can even do this on a countertop. Just lean your hands on a countertop and lean back as you melt your heart. That's a great way to stretch it out as well. Other things we do at a wall, we do legs up the wall, which again is absolutely beautiful. You just simply lie down, walk yourself in, kick your legs up the wall, and relax. You can lay there forever. It's restorative, it's rejuvenating, it's recuperating, it's just beautiful to do. Then um, we also use it for balance. So say we're working on balance, right? Maybe we find a little dancer, we can play. Or maybe we're in a tree and we can play. And it's just there. We can also open. So let's say we're in dancer and press against the wall to keep my heart open as I move into dancing pose. And then my very favorite posture to do on the wall after we've warmed our bodies up is half moon on the wall. And this is delicious, it's stabilizing, and half moon is a more challenging posture for a lot of us because it's balance, because it's strength, because it's stability. And so those things don't always go together. And when we do it on the wall, we can feel the openness and lightness that comes in this posture while we're being fully supported by the wall. And so simply what that looks like, I'm just going to move my props out of the way, is we just lean back into the wall, take a leg back. Maybe we take a block or I have bean bags under here, you can't see them under my hands. We just lean. So my heels on the wall, my hips are rolling open to the wall, my head and shoulders are coming back. So here I'm in the full expression of half moon, but I'm, it feels as if I'm laying down because I'm stable. All parts of my body are pressing into the wall. It's just a beautiful way to stretch and open. Now, don't expect that your hips and your shoulders will get right to the wall. That takes a lot of opening. I just finished teaching a class, so my body is nice and open. Um, I did some yoga this morning, so my hips are nice and open. My shoulders are nice and open. But the beautifulness of that is that when we're, in, we're on the wall, we can be here and we have a goal, we have a direction that we're stretching, okay? And maybe our hips don't ever get to the wall, that's okay. We're still opening, we're still stretching and that wall is still there to support us. So there is our fun fact Friday about props. I encourage you to find a wall. If nothing else, take downward dog on the wall for five to 10 breaths. Notice how it opens your back and stretches out your body again counteracting all of the work we do during the day, opening that heart back up, expanding our shoulders back open. Maybe you have time and you feel comfortable, you can take legs up the wall as well. The next time you come into yoga, I encourage you to take a blanket and two blocks and maybe a strap, maybe a bolster for Shavasana. You decide what props you need. Don't be afraid to use them. It will deepen your practice. Have a wonderful Friday. I will be here on Monday with some aerial fun. Um, and then Wednesday we'll be here for Just Breathe again. So have a wonderful weekend. The love and light in me honors the love and light in you. I look forward to connecting and blooming and growing with you at Redland. Namaste.